Hey everybody, welcome to this Stalls TV live class. I am Zach Ellsworth, your host, and today we are going to be talking about how to design and market the best website for a clothing brand. Should be, uh, I think it's an exciting topic, uh, a little bit off the beaten path for the decorating that we might normally do here at Stalls TV, but it's a very important topic to cover. Uh, especially for those of you who already have a clothing line or it's your dream to start a clothing brand and be able to design a website and market it to the masses. Our, all of our goals is um, probably rich and immense success. I'm not sure I can promise you that uh, after today's class, but we'll get you well on your way to having a website that communicates what you want it and need it to communicate. We're going to start today's class with a poll. I want to find out where our viewers are. So those of you on the GoToWebinar client that signed on uh, through GoToWebinar, please answer uh, the following question. And it's not even a question. Where I'm asking you to choose one of these three options. So choose the option that best describes you. My clothing brand is just an idea right now. Option two, my clothing brand is an extension of my existing decorating business. Option three, my clothing brand is my primary decorating business. And we'll give you a few minutes to, uh, a few seconds here to fill that out. And those of you on Facebook Live who are joining us there, you can feel free to chat in your answer. We will be taking questions throughout today's session. We'll get them from Facebook Live and GoToWebinar. So whatever client you were signed in on, please feel free to ask your questions, leave your comments, and we will address them as best as we can. So it looks like most of our GoToWebinar audience has voted. Um, we're going to close that poll down. And option number two, yes, option number two looks like the leading answer. My clothing brand is an extension of my decorating business. At 42% of you said that. And option number one came in second place. My clothing brand is just an idea right now and that looks like Joe's throwing me numbers over here 38 39 percent somewhere around there okay appreciate you answering that question not too many of you have your clothing line as your primary means of business so for those of you who it's just an idea right now this class will be a great help for those of you who have it as an extension I think it's going to be a help for you as well but you may have already considered some of the things that we're going to cover today we'll find out so the goal of this class is uh, I, I was thinking of it kind of like Jeopardy. The goal of this class is to get you to ask the right types of questions to lead you to the answers that you need to design and market your website. So your goal by attending this class, I'm going to assume, is to design and market your clothing brand website. One thing that we know for sure is that everybody who's watching this class uh, at home your clothing brand's probably a little bit different, has a little bit different need, reaches, or is built or designed for a little bit different type of person than the next person on this particular class. So there are different goals, which is why we are approaching this in a question form to get you to ask and answer the right questions for your particular brand. However, there are two, uh, I think, universal truths in the research and study that I've done on this topic for building designing and marketing a website for a clothing brand. There are two goals to every clothing brand website. Goal number one is engagement. We want engagement from our site visitors, from what we will call uh, users throughout this uh, class today. You want to get engagement. And what does engagement mean? That's getting a user or a site visitor to respond in a specific way that you desire. So universal truth one, every clothing brand website needs to be designed and marketed for engagement. Universal truth number two, and you potentially would put this as number one, but the goal of your clothing brand is to get sales. So every clothing brand website should be designed around how to get your users to engage and how to get your users to make purchases, whether that's on the website or through some other method that you have set up, depending on what your revenue generating um, scheme is. So we're going to take a look quickly, actually, 
I shouldn't say quickly. We're going to be on the computer a lot because I think that we can take a lot of cues from clothing brands that are successful out there. We're going to make some observations about these websites and these brands and ask the right questions and apply them to your clothing brand website. So let's take a look at the computer and we're just going to compare. We said everybody's clothing brand is going to be a little bit different. You're trying to reach different people. We're just going to look at three what I think are very different clothing brands, but three very successful clothing brands that have a great web presence. First, we're taking a look at Under Armour. So maybe your clothing brand is designed specifically for the sporting goods market or the sports enthusiast. This is what Under Armour does very well. As we take a look at the website, a lot of the things that I want you to hone in on is the pictures, what you see, the language or the wording that is being used, and we'll get into more in depth a little bit later, but just want to give you a quick overview of the Under Armour site. We can see dedication is a key theme here at the top of the page. That is going to appeal to somebody in the sporting goods market, a sports enthusiast. We see um, licensed goods here from Major League Baseball, so the um, graphics that you saw at the, top, at the top, you probably recognize most of the people in these pictures that are scrolling through. We have Steph Curry, we have Dwayne Johnson. These are influencers who associate or uh, sponsor this particular brand. So just a quick look at the Under Armour site. Now notice how this site is immediately speaking. We see product right up front. We're looking at sneakers here. Um, we're looking at how to be unstoppable performance wear here and here we see a little bit of fashion but it's still designed around that athleisure performance. Now if we go to another website, Louis Vuitton, which is a brand that most of the folks watching have probably heard of. You've probably seen their handbags um, here throughout the U.S. But the first thing that happens when you get to Louis Vuitton's site is they ask you where you are in the world. So this is a more not that Under Armour isn't a global brand, but what Louis Vuitton is trying to communicate is that trendsetters or people uh, who travel the globe wear or associate with this brand. So we'll pick our Americas here. So that's first consideration. We see some fine art here at the top of the page versus pictures of people in their sport in action. We're looking at fine art as we scroll down the page. Instead of in our industry, in the sporting goods industry, I know when we're looking for suppliers or when we're looking to be uh, a supplier, free shipping, next day shipping, those types of terms are thrown around a lot on websites. Here, Louis Vuitton calls it complimentary delivery. Just an interesting word choice rather than saying free shipping because free shipping is what Walmart and Amazon do. Louis Vuitton as a brand is complimentary delivery. So just little notes to think about here. We'll get more in depth as to the right questions, but just showing you three very different brands. So Under Armour for the sports enthusiast, Louis Vuitton is more in the fashion world. And then I'm gonna show you another website that you may or may not have ever heard of before. These guys are called Shinesty, and they are more of a lifestyle brand that is built for younger folks, college students mostly, are the people that, that I know that order from this website. So the apparel is trendy, but in a very different way than Louis Vuitton. This is more edgy, and you can see in the language that they use, they're having a play on words. Um, they have party suits. They have uh, bathing suits that aren't called Speedos. They do this America collection. And then down here in their advertising, this is tells you it's strictly for SEO and they just have all these things that that they're selling and at the end sorry you had to see that and their goal here at the bottom of the page is obviously to get us to sign up for their email list so three very different approaches to the people who are going to visit the site but each one appeals to a different group of people the goal again being engagement from the people that they want to reach. So each one of those websites had a way to engage, whether it's to sign up for an email list, whether it's to begin shopping, uh, whatever that, that engagement is that they want from us. And then each one of them also has a focus on sales because you can go make a purchase at each one of those particular websites. So let's focus in on engagement to start. So here are some questions to ask when we're talking about 
engagement, what we want to get from our users or what we want them to do. So the first question is simply that. What action or response do I want from a website visitor? So first question again, what action or response do I want as a clothing brand from my website visitor? And there's a number of different answers and I'm going to challenge you as you begin to answer this question for your clothing brand to not assume all of these answers. Like, yes, I, as I read you kind of these options of what people could do on the site, of course your answer is gonna be yes, but there needs to be a primary answer. What is the, if somebody does nothing else on my website, what is the one thing that I want them to do the first time they visit the website? Is that share my page or share my brand uh, on a social media platform? Is it like my page or my brand somewhere? Is it leave a comment about some of the products that they like? Is it make a purchase? Is your goal on that first visit to get somebody to make a purchase? All of this, and we'll talk about it in, in just a few minutes, informs what we're going to do when we design the website. Do we want a website visitor to buy our clothes and then make an Instagram post? There are lots of clothing brands out there that you can look at that have an Instagram feed right on their front page showing people wearing the product, if that's their goal. Do we want to get their email address? and just for further communication down the road. There are probably a lot more options of what we want that initial response or initial engagement to be, but you need to choose one thing to focus on when you begin your design. Not that those other things can't happen, but you need to choose one. One interesting thing, and we'll, uh, this will be a theme of everything that we talk about here today, but one interesting thing that you find out as you study words is that the word priority only became plural in the late 18 and early 1900s. Before that, you could only have one priority. There was no such thing as priorities because only one thing can be the most important. And that's very important when you're designing your website. What is the one thing that is most important that we want people to do? Okay, so first question to ask we said was what action or response do I want from a website visitor? You need to answer that question for your brand. Question number two, what type of person wears my brand? Question number two, what type of person wears my brand? And then you can ask yourself also, are you that type of person that's going to wear your brand? Because that's also very important. We won't say too much about that, but if you don't embody the brand that you're trying to put out there, it's gonna be very difficult for you to speak to a group of people that do if you're not part of it. So, what type of person wears my brand? We'll just throw out a few types of people. You can drill down as far as you want to, but the more you drill down, the more it will inform your decision making on how to design your website and ultimately market it when we get to the marketing portion here towards the end of the class. Do I want my, or the type of person that wears my brand, is it a soccer mom? Is it uh, an urban trendsetter? Like would be more like the Louis Vuitton brand that we looked at. Is it a farmer? That's one of the, not necessarily a clothing brand, but a nice, um, but a nice comparison is when you look at dating sites that are out there, folks who have built micro dating sites for, you've heard of farmers only, it's one of the most successful dating sites out there because it targets a specific group of people and they know what they're gonna get when they show up there. Uh, is, is the person who wears my brand a college student, like our Shinesty brand that we looked at? It completely informs everything that we do. Is it a sports enthusiast, maybe a youth sports enthusiast like the Under Armour brand appeals to. They appeal to both youth and adults, but when you walk into their retail stores, they also have a youth only retail store set up completely different than their adult one. So what type of person wears my brand? Question number three, what about my company or my design style makes it worth their time? that particular person that I'm talking to. What about my company or design style makes it worth their time? Is it something that they're gonna want to be seen in because everybody else is wearing it? Or is it something that is fashion forward and you're gonna be the first to wear it? Or is it something that just associates you with uh, a group of people that, that you wanna be associated with? But what about your company and design style makes it worth your target audience's time? 
So the three engagement questions to ask to get you started for designing your website. What action or response do I want from my website visitor? What type of person wears my brand? What about my company or my design style is going to make it worth their time? And how you answer those questions should inform the design of your website. So, for example, when we say, what action or response do I want? If we want them to share, like, comment, if we want them to get our brand out onto social media after that first visit, to share it because they think it's cool or they think it's something that their friends would somehow benefit from, then your website design needs to integrate with a social platform. That's just a given. Make it easy for your users to do what you want them to do. So um, we'll talk a little bit and review a few web platforms here in a little bit. But um, share, if we want them to share, if we want them to like, if we want them to Instagram it, give them a way to integrate with that social platform directly from your site to where they don't have to go out and do it on their own. Heck, you can even tell them what you want them to say about your brand. You can pre-write the post for them and all they have to do is post your product. If we want an email address, if that's the goal, if that's the first interaction or first engagement that we want, what should we do? I think we should definitely have a pop-up with a reason to subscribe to that email list. Um, on the Shinesty site, if you're there long enough, a pop-up comes up. Most of the, I actually looked at, I think, 20 different streetwear brands um, in looking at ones to, to feature for this particular class. Every single one of them it seemed like the first interaction they wanted was for me to sign up to their email list because once I was on the site for 5, 10, 15 seconds, I got a pop-up that they wanted to communicate with me, that I would be the first one to know about new designs that came out or new options that came out or clearances or promotions that they were running. But most people, most brands that I visited wanted to get me on their email list. Maybe I want that first response to be a purchase. Then I need to make shopping extraordinarily easy. Whether that is offering, you can still do the same pop-up. One of the companies that does this very well is called Rage On. We've talked about them before here at Stalls TV. But Rage On gives you a pop-up. And if you visit um, home goods sites like Wayfair, um, they will give you a pop-up with a discount to use right then on your visit. They actually have programs now that when you navigate the mouse up to the address bar to move away from the website, it can generate a pop-up that says, don't go away, we'll give you 40% off to order right now. Do you want to take advantage of it? But it's just for that time. So lots of options to think about there, but that all needs to go into your thought when designing your website. What action or response do I want? So how does the type of person that wears my brand inform website design. Let's take a look at the computer again, and I think Nike does a really good job at this, um, talking about the type of people understanding who wears the different brands that they have. The, the nice thing about Nike's site here is they actually have three different brands across the top. So we have, when most people think about Nike, or at least most people in my circles think about Nike, they immediately think about um, Air Jordan shoes. Michael Jordan is closely tied with the Nike brand. But as we look at the Jordan brand, there are things that are um, that were informed by who they're trying to reach. Obviously at the top of the page we're looking at shoes, we're looking at basketball players wearing the shoes, we're looking at them being successful and accomplishing all of their sports dreams. As we go down the page, we see pictures with hardwood and basketballs. Uh, remember that because that's going to be a direct comparison that we draw to these other two brands, Hurley and Converse, that we'll look at next. But you can see this is more of, um, we're going to talk about feel and we're going to talk about experience. This is more of an urban feel, an athletic feel that we get on the Jumpman page. When we look at Hurley's page, one of the first things you'll notice is <clears throat> pictures are completely different. The product being featured is completely different. We go from basketball and sneakers to um, shorts for surfing or swimwear. 
And as we look down the page, instead of the basketballs and the hardwood, we get surfboards, sand, and palm trees because this is the type of person that this particular brand appeals to. One more look at the next site, which is Converse. And how is Converse different from the people who wear Hurley or the people who wear the Jumpman brand? Converse, you can see immediately you get some vintage looking photography and video. We're looking at sneakers mostly and a lot of uh, what they're showing us is skateboards and concrete. So we had basketballs and hardwood. We had surfboard sand and waves. Here we have skateboards and concrete. And when we talk about the wording or the word choice that's being used, here we're looking at durability, which is specifically designed to speak to somebody who is going to be skateboarding. Um, we also have essential, never basic. Compare that with Hurley, the wording that they use, we have a trainer, which is you're not going to see on, on the Converse site. We also see um, that they're going for a barefoot feel. So again, back to the sand, back to the waves. It's a completely different word choice than what you're going to get over on the Nike site as well. The Jumpman site is going to talk more about performance uh, and what you can do in their shoes and the construction of the shoes and why it's great for basketball, how you can dominate any game in any season. So a lot of decisions you can see um, pretty easily the design differences there. You can also look at photography is extraordinarily important to communicating what your brand is. The photography and the filters that are being used here are very different than the ones specifically when you go to the Converse site. We talked about it a little bit already, but you get way more of a vintage feel, more of an Instagram feel, retro feel on these um, photographs. And even the way the product is laid out. Odds are you're not going to see a chair with a pattern on it on the Jumpman brand, but here on Converse it, uh, it makes sense. So they also have a difference in the products that they're featuring. Here again we see the shoes, Hurley we saw the shorts, and on the Nike page we saw basketball shoes mostly. So what about the question, um, what about my company or design style makes it worth their time? On these three particular brands that we looked at, we saw specifically on the Nike site that you have influencers or athletes who actually wear the brand and compete professionally that would make it worth my time because maybe I want to be able to eventually compete professionally or at a semi-pro level and wearing Nike clothes helps me do that. At least that's what they want to think, that I can be an NBA basketball player just by wearing Air Jordan shoes. They do a really good job at it. but. I'm not anywhere close at this point. Um, we also see on the uh, Hurley site that they're featuring professional uh, people who compete surfing. Completely different group of people who wear it, but your brand speaks to a group of people. There are influencers somewhere for that group of people. I know a lot of the younger generation, the tweens and the teens, are spending a lot of time being influenced by folks who only are famous on Instagram or only are famous on YouTube. Some people play video games all day. Uh, if, if your brand is an e-gaming brand, which is an absolutely uh, exploding market, it's one you should take a look at if you're a decorator, you need those YouTube and um, the video game um, platform where people watch other people play video games. The most popular one is called Twitch. There are influencers on there who wear and who design particular brands. So understand who it is those people that you're trying to reach or that associate with your brand or influenced by and send them some free clothes. That's one way uh, to help. So when it comes to engagement, we have a good understanding. We want to know what we want them to do. As soon as they get to the site, we want them to know who we are and who we appeal to, and we want them to know why they should be wearing our brand in the design of our website. What about sales questions to ask? And this one is a little bit more, uh, I think I want to use the word fundamental, where how exactly will I sell my product? 
And when I say how will I sell it, I don't mean um, necessarily online versus in store, but is my brand a brand that is only sold at retail price? Some of the big brands or the more exclusive brands, they don't do clearances, they don't do promotions because you're going to just pay retail price for the product. That is the feel or the experience that you want for your brand. So am I only offering retail price? Will I use discount codes or promotions like Shinesty or Rage On or a lot of these online only brands do that are trying to appeal to a little bit more of a mass market, not so exclusive, not so high end? Will I offer discounts and promotions? This is definitely going to come into play when we start to look at what platform we want to build our website on because do I have the ability to do that? Can I offer discounts and promotions? Also, third question to ask about how will I sell my product? Will I have a clearance section? When you walk into big department stores, um, even Target, Walmart, you can go to the clearance section to get what has gone um, quote unquote out of style for that season. So will I offer a clearance section? So those are questions to ask yourself. How will I sell my product? Is it retail price only? Do I need to have the ability to offer discounts and promotions? Do I need the ability to have a clearance section on my website? How long, next question to ask, how long are my items available? A lot of brands, especially those exclusive ones, are going to have items available for a limited time or a limited run. When we think about, for those of you who are familiar with LuLaRoe, they do a particular pattern of leggings or uh, dress or whatever women's item that they're selling. They make it avail They only make so many of those items available. When they're gone, they're gone. And there's a big aftermarket for those products with people looking for those types of patterns. So will my brand be an exclusive for a limited time or a limited run? That would fit more into that retail price only model. Um, maybe my items are available seasonally. Maybe I have something new come out each season and then I will discount or clearance what was the season before. Or maybe my items are going to be available year round. I'm only going to come up with a few items for my particular brand on a yearly basis or maybe more than a few, but they're going to be available year round and see what sells. So that's another question you have to answer. How will I sell? How long are my items available? All right, I'm going to stop. I see um, some questions coming in here. We'll try to answer those before we get into which platform to choose, some of the benefits and advantages of certain platforms, and then we'll uh, wrap it up talking about how to market our website. So let's see, what do we have here? Joe, do you have anything on GoToWebinar or are we just on Facebook questions? Uh, the only things that we have over on GoToWebinar, I, I have answered it, but okay. the primary question being, will this video be available later, uh, which will be on Stalls TV by the beginning of next week? Okay, so the primary question through GoTo is, will this video be available in the future? Yes, it will be up on StallsTV.com at the beginning of next week, for those of you who want to know that. All right, so my Facebook question, these three sites have the same feel. What can I do to make my site stand out a bit more? Uh, and that was on the Nike page. Yes, they do have the same uh, overall design aesthetic. It's the choices of the wording and what they're featuring that is different. So how can you make your site stand out a bit more? That will actually lead us right into our platform conversation to answer that. So there are, there are I don't even want to guess at how many different website platforms are out there available for e-commerce. We're going to take a look at probably well, what are, I know, two or three of the most popular platforms that are out there for clothing brands or any type of e-commerce business, and we'll compare uh, a few of the features. So the first one that we're going to look at, and this is how you can make your site stand out um, a little bit more, is choosing the platform that is right for what you want to do. So first one we're going to look at is Shopify. Shopify, I'm guessing most of you um, have probably heard of this if you've looked at all for an online site for e-commerce. Shopify gives you a lot of different ways to sell. You can have an online store, which is pretty straightforward. You can have a POS, a retail package. So if you do have a storefront and you want to sell on that storefront and you want it to integrate into your online store, Shopify has that built for you. 
if you were already on another platform because you've already started your clothing brand website, but you wanted to use some of the tools that Shopify offers, you can get the buy button and integrate that into a number of different website platforms that are available. One of the other nice things about Shopify is they give you the ability to offer a Facebook shop, Facebook Messenger orders, you can sell on Amazon, and then they also have an enterprise option for larger companies that, that need a lot more customization. So what's great about Shopify is the resources that are available to you, specifically this app store. Um, we'll take a look at that here real quick. So the way Shopify works is much like um, your Apple computer or your iPhone. They let developers come in and create applications to do what it is you want to do on the website. So not everything is built into a theme that you're buying. So what happens here is you can go check out the new and noteworthy apps, but basically everything in the Shopify app store is built for e-commerce. So here you have an app that gives you coupons and pop-ups to get coupons that you can uh, put on your website. Here you have a free shipping bar that you can install onto your website. Here's more email pop-ups. Here's a loyalty program that you can install. And the nice thing about these apps, just like most other app stores, you have reviews uh, from other users who are using it and success stories that you can build on. So if you want to grow sales, you can get uh, a bunch of sales apps to plug in as well. So sales pops, boost conversion, shows you your recent sales, they're gonna pop up. So if somebody just bought your clothing brand from Kansas City, Missouri, you can pop up that so-and-so bought from Kansas City, Missouri two minutes ago. That happens a lot if you guys visit travel websites like Expedia or Travago, they're telling you who is booking rooms, who is looking at rooms in that area to incentivize or to um, basically motivate people to make a purchase before it's gone. So if you are on a limited or exclusivity run of something, something that says there's five of 100 of these left will help people uh, make that purchase. So Shopify is great for um, basically e-commerce, lots and lots of clothing brands across the country are using Shopify. One of the other platforms that we want to look at is WordPress. Shopify is also pretty inexpensive to get started. Um, I recommend you go to shopify.com to check out the pricing. We don't have time to cover all of that today. If you have questions, uh, you can chat those in and we will, if we don't get to them all during today's class, we will uh, provide answers afterwards. So WordPress, again, another one you've probably all heard of. This one, WordPress claims to power 27% of the internet. Now, and this is just my personal experience, WordPress for a few of the websites that I have attempted to build over the years has been difficult um, to use. There's a lot of powerful tools within WordPress, but me not being a graphic designer and not being anywhere near um, technology savvy when it comes to website development or anything like that, WordPress was a bit of a challenge for me to set up. If you're doing a blog, I think it's great. It is definitely one of the platforms that people use most for blogging, but for e-commerce, um, it's, it's a little bit more of a learning curve, let's put it that way. However, lots of different templates are available to make your website stand out. You can customize those templates in a lot of different ways, probably more so than the other platforms. So if you really want customization, if you want your site to be different, WordPress would be the way to go, but know that you're gonna put a little bit of extra work in on the front end to get it to look like you want it to look, and you may require a little bit of outside help. Again, just my experience, but lots of people are using that platform. Uh, let's look at one more, Squarespace. Squarespace is my personal favorite um, based on looks. So Squarespace has some of the best looking um, templates to choose from. It's also relatively inexpensive. I'm just gonna scroll down through here to where you guys can see some of the templates that they offer. It's very mobile friendly, which Shopify is as well, but you're gonna want mobile friendly things if one of your goals is to get your brand followers to share on Instagram, that needs to look good when they go to your website on mobile. 
because most people are using Facebook and Instagram on their phones, so your site needs to look good uh, mobile. So lots of tools available with Squarespace. Again, the reason that it's one of my favorites is strictly based on the designs that are available for you there. Um, so Shopify, WordPress, Squarespace, there's tons of other ones out there. Uh, Magento is a really popular platform that people build on. Um, Big Cartel, WooCommerce, lots of them out there. Shopify, Squarespace are probably the two easiest and quickest to set up in my personal opinion. WordPress is one of the most widely used for blogging, a little bit more difficult to set up on the e-commerce side, but not impossible, so I don't want to scare you away. Now, the other option, and it's again kind of going back to that question, how do I make my site stand out a bit more? The other option is to go custom. Now, custom is when you're going to go out and try and find a developer somewhere to build your website completely custom. For a clothing brand, actually for any business, I want to caution you against going custom out of the gate because the investment level that it takes is significantly more than pulling a template off of a website and just customizing it with your own photographs and your own feel that way. And investing that much money up front because custom websites start anywhere. I'm sure you can find somebody to build it for $500 to $1,000, but as soon as you start adding a lot of products and you want control over how you add those products, the price can quickly escalate. Where if you don't know if your clothing brand is even going to work or be desired by somebody, it's best to start with one of those template sites that's only going to charge you a few bucks, 10, 20 bucks a month to at least get out there and test your concept. Invest your money in marketing the idea and connecting with customers and not so much on the, the back end of building a website that is going to look a little bit different from what's there. So personal recommendation and that is a philosophy that was made popular by a guy named Eric Ries. There's a book out there called The Lean Startup. I would highly recommend that any of our viewers here read that. It's a great way to test new products is taking the Lean Startup approach. You start with a minimum viable product and then you adjust from there once your customers, your potential customers, tell you what's right or what's wrong about your product rather than investing tons of money up front, launching it to the market. Maybe it doesn't do what you hope it does and then you have to pull back and regroup. It's a, it's a big waste of money to put all that money up front. So prove your model as early as you can. Prove your clothing brand and your assumptions based on the questions that we're asking as early as you can. So caution you against custom, but if it's the way that you want to go, you could probably build a custom website again as little as 500 bucks. Go to a place like um, go to a place like Fiverr.com, Upwork.com. These are all places where freelancers will quote to build you a website. So you can check those out. Now, let's talk about marketing. So that was all about design, how we can design the best website for our particular brand. So what about marketing? This one. I'm going to keep simple for you. Go to Facebook, do Facebook ads because of all the questions that you just answered about how to design your website, Facebook ads gives you the ability to target those exact people that you know you need to reach. You can find, let's say, your target market ended up being the um, soccer moms. You can go to Facebook ads, you can set a demographic, choose female, you can choose the age group that you're trying to reach, and you can even choose the region and their other likes. So say I'm trying to reach soccer moms who like to go to Starbucks and get lunch at Panera. They probably like those pages. You can target those people anywhere in the country and reach them with your ads to get them to your website. So invest some time taking the answers to those questions and moving them over to Facebook ads. Again, extremely important that your website is mobile friendly. Most of the platforms, again, that I showed you will give you a mobile friendly website, but if you go the custom route, make sure it's mobile friendly because most people are viewing those types of ads on mobile devices. Secondly, there's Google AdWords. This one, I, I probably wouldn't, for a clothing brand, invest as much money in as I would Facebook ads because you can't get quite as granular or as targeted as you can on Facebook ads. However, not a bad idea to try it out. It's easily measurable. You can measure your results on AdWords, so it's a good thing to try out. Wouldn't invest the largest portion of your marketing budget there, though. Thirdly, 
marketing a clothing brand, we mentioned it already, the best way to market a clothing brand is, is through influencers who have influence over the people who associate with your brand. So whether that's sending out free clothing to them of your brand to wear around, whether that is paying them to do Instagram posts for you wearing the clothing, all of that stuff exists and it's, it's a way to reach um, a good group of people, especially ones that you specifically want to target. Same thing with Instagram ads. Facebook and Instagram ads can tie together, so you can tie up your Instagram ads there. Actually, the Shinesty uh, site that we took a look at at the beginning of our session, I found that through an ad in my personal Instagram feed. Now, one more note on marketing, and I'm going to show you guys one more tool that I didn't have pulled up here, but I was reminded of it as we were talking about marketing. When you're posting ads or when you're posting uh, to your page and you have followers, you'll want to post video more than you do photographs because video has a much higher engagement rate. People tend to watch videos or look, look at those more than they do photos. So how can you, not being a video editor or a website designer, make great videos? This site, Animoto.com, is an extraordinarily easy way to make videos for um, your clothing brand. And the reason that I know this is I have used this site personally. We've used it here at Stalls TV over the years to create some of the videos that to do very quickly. The reason that we have used this is because you can take your photographs and put them in basically a motion form. So you can upload eight or ten photographs into an Animoto template and it will give movement to them and you can put text or whatever you want to communicate over that. You can put buy buttons or navigate to the website buttons through your Facebook ads. But here's how Animoto works. You set the tone with a template. You can choose the style of video that you want. You can choose there's a lot of free songs on here that you can use. You customize it by adding your photos or even if you already have video clips and text. And then when you finalize it, the Animoto team gives you four different video options that you can use to share. One that's specifically designed for Facebook and Instagram. You can also make, rather than uh, having the widescreen videos, you can also make square videos now on Animoto as well, which are proven by Facebook to be engaged even more than the, um, than the widescreen videos. So, encourage you to visit this website, check it out. You can make a few videos for free. Eventually, you might want to sign up for, a <clears throat> for an account if you plan on making a lot of them, if this is going to be your primary way to advertise or market your brand on social media. Highly recommend Animoto. There are probably other services out there like it, but this was super easy to set up, and you can make your first video in about 10 to 15 minutes just by having your photographs ready. All right, any more questions coming in? Okay, first of all, can you spell Animoto? Yes, I can spell Animoto. It is A-N-I-M-O-T-O. -O. So that's A-N-I-M-O-T-O. -O. And could you also list again the book that you recommended? The book is called The Lean Startup, and it's by a guy named Eric Ries. It's E-R-I-C, and the last name is R-I-E-S. And I believe he has a website that kind of outlines the tenets of the Lean Startup. I think it's just at theleanstartup.com. Uh, thoughts on Deco Network? Uh, thoughts on Deco Network. Um, in all honesty, I'm not super familiar with it. I know uh, overall generally how it works. I think Deco Network is designed more for decorators of custom apparel and not necessarily what I would define as a clothing brand. So for custom apparel and giving customers the availability to do design work themselves, um, I've, I know a lot of folks who use it, so I'm sure it's a reliable platform. I haven't used it personally, but I wouldn't recommend it for a clothing brand just because of my preference on having a lot of control over the look and feel and being very trendy. Most, most clothing brands are trying to appeal to a certain demographic. I don't think Deco Network gives you the ability to do that. It's more about the design. And also, uh, who would you recommend if you need substores of client shops? Who would I recommend if you need substores of client shops? Really good question. 
Um, lots of people out there doing that. Uh, one of the most popular ones is Order My Gear. OrderMyGear.com does um, flash stores, basically, client shops. There are, um, they're not coming to me right now, but there are quite a few other ones out there. Order My Gear is the one that a lot of stalls customers use, so I know them uh, well, and nobody seems to have too many complaints about them. So Order My Gear is where I would send you to start looking. Are there any colors that are more attractive to viewers than others when setting up a website? That's a really good question. So are there any colors that are more attractive? I don't know the studies, but they are out there. Um, so I would probably just recommend Googling that study, but pick colors that fit your brand. If your brand is young and fun, you don't want to go with drab colors like brown or maybe like a dark orange. Um, if you're trying to appeal to a more feminine audience, obviously you're going to go with lighter, brighter colors. If you're trying to appeal to a more masculine audience, you're starting to look more in those um, harder edge colors, the reds, the blacks, those types of things. But tons of studies, I'm sure, have been published out there, so I would recommend checking those out. But just make sure your colors fit the brand. And finally, one of our other viewers has offered that Inksoft will offer uh, substores. Okay, Inksoft will offer substores. Thank you for that. All right, so if you have any more questions, feel free to chat those in. We'll get them answered. But for now, we are wrapping up. Thanks for attending this Stalls TV Live class, and we'll see you next time.